What's up guys? Welcome to another edition of Much's Wrench Set. Appreciate everybody being here. Tonight we got Brian. Brian, hit it. I'll give it right to you. What's up? My name's Brian. Brian Johnson. Can we do last name too? Sure. Well, we do now. Yeah, I'm Brian it's Johnson. It's not anonymous anymore. Yeah. Um, I, I do that because I'm a realtor. I don't know. It's just it's, uh, That's how we flow. We first and last name everywhere. But anyways, um, I brought the list of things to talk about tonight. And uh, let's get in. You ready to get into it? Yeah, always. Let's do it. All right, cool. Oh, news. Uh, like we said last time, be sure to follow us at Much as Wrench Set on Instagram there. So you can see all of the uh, three pictures I've posted so far, but uh, we're going to try to start posting more, keep you guys uh, up to date on some things, and uh, as summer's rolling around, we're going to start going to more car shows, we'll have the cars out more, uh, a lot more uh, a lot more things to take pictures of and get out there, and we'll post it, and you guys uh, let us know what you want to see, as always, and we'll, uh, we'll put them up there and discuss it and keep it rolling. So yeah, hit us. What do you got? Well... First of all, man, thanks for having me on the show because I tell you, it's nice to be around, be around car people. It's like talk about houses all day. It's house, house, and I love that, but it's it is work. And when I get around car people, man, I just feel like you know that's where my soul is. So it's nice to be around it, uh, people like you, and talk about it and get into it. So well, I'll tell you, everyone thinks cars are so expensive until you start talking homes, and then cars don't seem so expensive anymore. Well, yeah, I mean, you gotta have. Well, you don't absolutely have to have a car with a house or a house with a car you could live in a car uh, maybe a van again or something like that i saw a meme recently said uh you can race wait oh shoot uh you can live in a car but you can't race a home that's true I'm an advocate for uh cars but what if it's a winnebago and you live there uh i've seen some ls swapped winnebagos yeah so yeah there's you can you can make anything happen that'd be fun yeah you got the will there's a way there's way too much uh area for any torque tear so you know what i mean yeah <laughs> I've never seen, uh, I've seen some of those uh, Chrysler minivans, though, the, the super turboed ones. Yeah, oh yeah. Not supra turboed, but yeah. the super. Like the old town and countries with yes. the slicks on the front. Yeah, oh, the yeah. super sleepers. Those are fun. All right, so here's my here's my first thing. So how about we uh, we share some crazy car stories? Oh, God, right off the bat, huh? Yep. So uh, do you have anything in mind? I got a, I got a few. Man. I feel like that's one of those topics that there's so many things I've done that I feel like are crazy in cars. I would have to have more of like a, like you would have to give me a, a subtopic. I'll to give go you one. Of. S10 dropping the S10 on Halloween. Oh God! That, back to the S10. I always try to, uh, I always try to avoid talking about that. Try damn to thing. that thing. All right. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I mean, that's not that crazy of a story, but uh, yeah. So first, uh, first car I had that bagged and body dropped uh, 96 S10. And uh, Brian and I actually know each other from uh, our parents lived next to each other. So neighbors. we grew up next to each other. He's a little neighbors. bit older than I am. But, uh, yeah, we were neighbors, and uh, they got into cars before I did, obviously. And so I was kind of always over there trying to uh, trying to live the lifestyle when I was only 10 years old. Couldn't drive yet. But, uh, yeah, you guys were always kind of the – you and your brother, um, always kind of the cool guys I was looking up to oh, in thanks, the cars. Man. Yeah, so that's how we met. But, uh, yeah, I got this S10, and uh, your folks did uh, did a big Halloween display huge halloween display i remember strobe lights chainsaw with no chain on it it was great i mean i was scared to death of it till i was like 14 <laughs> we, we had actors too we had characters it's like everybody's you did you guys were hiding it. leaves pop up surprised nobody uh ever had a heart attack walking by there well i think somebody did that night that you dropped the s10 oh that wasn't that bad that that kid was running we scared him out to the street and then he's driving down the street and then he, the kid thinks he's safe, and he drops the back end on that truck, and it just sparked, and it made all this crazy noise. It scared me. I was like, what the heck is happening? It was funny timing, though, because Jeff, your brother, was running down the street with a shovel chasing people. He'd walk up real slow yeah. and just start dragging the shovel. Yeah. And then I just happened to come down. I think there was video of it for a while. Um, but uh, I just come down the street and drop the back end, and the fenders just... Oh, yeah, it was... It was pretty funny. Yeah, it wasn't just like a, I mean, it was loud, super Bad. loud. Yeah, picture picture uh, sheet metal on the ground. Yeah, going by at twenty. It's, it's That's not it. a good sound. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> what uh, what's some crazy car stories you got? All right, so uh, I won't mention the dealership, but uh, I worked for a car dealership for quite a long time, and um, you know we had auction cars. People come in, they trade in their older cars, and some we keep, some we uh, flip back out to resell, and some you know go to auction. So the ones that went to the auction, we would take them down to an old lumber yard. Um, 
so there's this there's this old lumber no what was it it was like an old home depot but i think they called it something else back in the 90s 80s and they had this big building out back so you got the old store that's abandoned and then you've got like a big parking lot store and then there's like a building out in the back and then there's like asphalt all around it so what we did was uh we ramped cars we ramped the auction cars and you were smart because most people just ramp cars off railroad tracks which have mixed results. Oh, that's my next story. Well, you, okay. Well, I was going to say, you were at least in a controlled environment for a little while. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, long story short, um, I don't know. I won't say whose idea it was. But um, I was like, there's a lot of wood back here and a lot of potential for some fun. So, and we had we had like two hours to kill. So, because um, we were done early. And uh, somebody, like, I don't know who built a ramp and uh it was as long as the car it was probably about I don't know, maybe like i'm trying to think maybe it was like three two and a half feet three that's feet. pretty high yeah are we talking like plywood and two by fours or? yep so like barely barely good enough for a rollerblader oh yeah yeah it i i wish i would have had a camera maybe that would have been a good thing back then i mean especially if there's like facebook youtube and all that there was none of that back then it was like 90s yeah well back then you would have had the big vhs on the shoulder right yeah no, i'm just kidding he's not that old yeah i think you might have we had one 12 times zoom but uh yeah so we built a ramp and uh we had three cars we had an 86 cutlass um like the two-door cutlass okay and um oh, what was it a hyundai excel and an 88 accord hatchback okay so Who's going to take the, who's going to build the ramp? You know, we all did. And then who's going to take the car off of it first? I volunteered because, you know, it was my engineering and uh, I was like, I got to test it out. So you could only get up to 35 miles an hour going around the building. And it's hilarious because, you know, it's like all season tires that are just crap. And you're going, and it's going all the way around. You're trying to get as much speed up as right before you get to the ramp. So when I hit the ramp, you know, I was expecting to go through the air or whatever and just flattened out. And I drove right across it. It just collapsed. So we had to rebuild it, you know, stronger, bigger, better. I can't imagine why it collapsed, you know, a 2,500-pound car. Just, I know. Yeah. So uh, it actually worked next time. I took it off the ramp, and um, I hit the ramp at probably 35 miles an hour. No, 30, 35 miles an hour. Not it's moving. It wasn't fast enough. Well, it sounds pretty fast for a <laughs> homemade ramp. Because you think the car should go... You know, here's the ramp. You think the car should hit it and go like that. I mean, front engine, it's heavy, and I wasn't even thinking about it. It goes like that. Yeah. Well, nobody ever thinks about that in ramp construction. If you don't get the uh, if you don't get the back wheels on the ramp before the front wheels drop off, the it'll ramps will send the back flying up. People never make ramps long enough. Yeah. Yeah. So Is that was that what happened? Pretty much. I mean, if if that's what you think, I mean, as far as like the. Or it could have been the 500-pound engine in the front, that too. Yeah. yeah so I, what happened? Did it kill the car? Oh, well, no. The, no? No, I took the, the Honda off first, um, and it, it went as many times as you wanted to go. The Cutlass, same thing. So I think we ramped, and we all took turns ramping these things. Um, we ramped them probably six, five, six times. Wow. And um, what we didn't account for also was as you're driving along like this, you know, you just think you're going to sit there, but no, you're you're like going flying or whatever, and you hit your head on the yeah. ceiling every time. So we're driving around like this, you know, trying to get a speed up and holding on, and and it's hilarious standing outside and watching these people just like go like this, and right before they hit it, and they, the funny part was watching the person inside because it looked like popcorn in there. Oh, bet that can't be good for your back. I uh, probably not. Yeah, <laughs> but we were young, you know. Yeah. And uh, we didn't feel any of that. So, uh, and then, let's see, the Hyundai comes running around, and it went from to the next time it comes around. To In worse shape each time. Sound like he was missing a cylinder when he pulled away. There was uh, transmission fluid all over the ground. So, yeah, that was... Uh, you guys never got fired for doing this? Well, they never found out. I mean... I didn't see the giant ramp out back. Oh, we took everything down. It was portable too. Yeah. Wow. 
Oh, Jesus, you guys you should know, be doing building mind, homes. I was a kid when we did this. I was a kid. Probably 18. 16? Uh, oh. Maybe 20. Okay. Yeah. You should have known better. I knew. That being said, I would have been completely on board for this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, you know, being like, so, my, one, okay, so let's talk about neighborisms here. So, not neighborisms, I'm just making up words now. I like it. But, like. Is that a word? Let us know. It went like this. The guy on, so I was on, let's just say I was on your right. And then the guy on my right, my neighbor, he was the one that I looked up to. You know, he was the guy with the car. It kind of trickled down to, you know, your house. Yeah. And uh, he told me one time, he's like, if you're going to do stuff, do it while you're young and you live at home. And I was like, okay. But he's like, don't get into trouble. Don't do stupid stuff. It's going to get you hurt and all that stuff. You know, public safety announcement, public just. Yeah, we don't condone anything we discuss here. And we wore seatbelts. Yeah, well, that's good. Yeah, no helmets. Would have been good. Yeah, maybe. But uh, anyways, yeah, that was, uh, that was a fun. We, we ramped cars. I like it. And that was fun. Uh, we also played car tag, too. Car tag. Yeah, because all the cubbies were all the... Um, Lumber used to be. You could hide in there, and somebody comes creeping through. You just tap their bumper, and then you get a five-second run. <laughs> so, Boy, I missed out. That sounds like a fun place. Uh, it was it was something, man. Nice, nice. I didn't do too much ramping of cars. I mean, we did, like I said, we did the occasional railroad tracks. I never did it in my car because I, I think I was pretty aware of the, uh, the damage it would cause doing that. But uh, <laughs> funny story with ramping. I remember uh, in Iraq um, – <clears throat> when we were uh, still in our Humvees before the MRAPs had come in. Um, and even once our MRAPs came in, we still switched back and forth sometimes between running Humvees for our runs and MRAPs. But uh, I remember about halfway through, so we were kind of at that point where, you know, we'd seen some things. We were kind of like, well, F it. You know, might as well have a good time while we're out here. And uh, I remember uh, in our Humvee, I was the gunner, and our driver, he was a little nuts. We were all a little nuts, the three of us in that truck. Good and, place uh, to have him. Yeah, yeah, it was. But uh, a lot of the bridges, you know, are kind of makeshift because a lot of the bridges had either been blown up or some places there weren't. So uh, the engineers would, would put in these uh, these bridge structures. Well, there was this one bridge that uh, kind of like your ramps, not a lot of transition period. Very short, very abrupt, and then right up to the bridge. Well, we uh, and it was over a big river, probably 40, 50 foot drop down into the river. And I don't know how deep the river was, but deep. So one day we're in a convoy. We're running, running our normal mission, and uh, we decide to uh, ramp it. So we got up to, I'm going to guess, 45 or 50, and, uh, you know, it's not easy in a Humvee that weighs probably, what, they weigh 10,000 pounds maybe, I mean, with all that armor, maybe more. I mean, they were they were beasts. Yeah. And we hit this bridge, and we go airborne. The problem was, when we went airborne, and it's like a one-and-a-half lane-wide bridge, very narrow, one okay. way, and, uh, well, we land sideways on this bridge. So we ramp it, and we land sideways. So he, as soon as we land, we're going towards the edge of this bridge, and he's got to jerk it back, get it under control. But I just thought after that, I was like, man, if we had gone in, we were dead. Yeah. Because those up-armored doors, you couldn't even open them when the truck was just sitting there. Mm. Like, it was hard to get out of the truck just normally sitting there. If we had gone in the water, oh, we would have been done. Man. Done. But we would have had a good story, I guess, right? So well, you, you brought it back. Yeah, yeah. Well, without the crash part. Yeah, yeah. He corrected it. He did. But uh, that could have been interesting. Yeah. It would have sucked to die in war from a motor vehicle accident. <laughs> But uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I just feel like with cars in general, there's so many crazy things. Like I said, you, I would need subtopics or I'd have to – a lot of things I've just forgotten about. You know, cause I've been driving for, what, 14, 15 years now, and uh, I just forget about a lot of things. Yeah. Just so many things that you don't remember that until somebody uh, starts talking about a story and it sparks that memory, and you're like, man, remember that one time? What about you guys? You guys got some crazy car stories that you really want to tell us? We'd like to hear them. If it's crazy enough, we can discuss it next time. Feel free to uh, comment below, uh, shoot us a message, let us know, as long as it was something semi-legal, as long as nobody got hurt, nobody uh, else's property got destroyed, let us know. Let us know your crazy story. I'd really actually like to hear. Maybe I'll come up with some kind of a, a prize if enough of you guys uh, let us know your car stories. Maybe we'll find a winner. So next time, it's the first time we've done this. Yeah, for you guys, homework, craziest car story, let us know. We don't condone anything illegal. At all. Again, yeah. Waiver. Disclaimer. Yeah. Asterisk. Big one. <laughs> so, what about you? you? Got any other crazy stories you want to talk about? Yeah, so uh, you mentioned uh, railroad tracks. And uh, we were on our way to um, a wedding. So, let me let me back the story up. My wife has a Mini Cooper S. And, um, well, that's another story. This is when I didn't have one. And we both have one now. 
but um well, we you guys used are to, cute that way you know you have the same cars so. dude i'm telling you this these cars we used to like not fight but argue over who's going to drive the mini cooper and i could you know i she doesn't want to drive my suv i get it you know it's all blacked out and she said that you know look like somebody coming through a neighborhood who's gonna you know do something bad or something i don't know but there's a lot of cars that are blacked out now this is back when you know not so many were but um what years are the uh the minis uh hers is a 19 and mine's an 18 okay so they're brand new yeah she's got a um cooper s and i've got a john cooper works and um I'll, I'll tell you a story about that real quick then i'll go to the the ramp her lease was up on her 15 so we went to cleveland and um they had what she wanted up there so we get up there and i'm thinking you know this is cool it's cheaper it's what she wants all that and then they had this one sitting on the showroom floor that it had um race numbers on it checkered flag on the back it's september and it had the auto show cash sticker on it oh it was an auto show car yeah okay and it had been sitting there since february so i'm like i wonder if they're gonna deal on it so the guy's writing you know getting shannon's car all worked up and Oh, so this wasn't the one she wants. She had already had her hers picked yeah, out. Yeah, she's she's in finance. Like they're almost done. Okay, so you're wandering around, which is dangerous for a car guy at a dealership. Yeah, it's it is. You're right. And so, um, I told I asked the manager. I was like, "Hey, man, um, if you can motivate me price wise on this car, I might test drive it. And if I like it, I might take it home." I had no intention of getting this car. I mean, I I wanted an S two thousand, and I ended up getting this car because he gave me like nearly eight thousand dollars off. He, he showed me. He's like, that. And I was like, crap. I mean, I stepped in it, you know. I make you an offer you can never refuse. It's like you go to the store. The rule, my rule is, you're supposed to, like, drive away and come back if you want it. Mm-hmm. But I didn't drive away. I just wanted that car. Hey, if they give you a good enough price, why not? Yeah. Plus, I've been having problems with my view. You know, like, I went to a, a listing appointment, right, for this guy's house. I go inside. I come back out. And the door won't open. Well, I've been having problems with the latch anyway, but I left my parking lights on after I got there, mm. so I couldn't unlock the door. And I, there's not a lock on the other side, and the thing doesn't work because you're trying to open it with the key, yeah. and the latch is broken. So that was the last straw. Last straw. I was. Wait, like, is it gone? You sold your Saturn? Oh man, I Do still you? have it. I'll never. Okay, I was gonna say that thing will fall apart before I. You still had it. Yeah. yeah, I love that thing. Yeah. I mean, you're one of the few people with one still running. So. That's uh, J. What is it? J. Thirty five V six Honda. It's got, it has. A, I just learned it has a GM transmission, not a Honda transmission. Hmm. Somebody, one of my buddies, told me he's a he used to be an Acura tech, and he said and he's a Honda tech now. But he said that um, all those transmissions, the Acura ones, they just eat themselves up real bad. So. Oh, so the so the GM transmission being in there is a good thing. Yeah. Oh wow, that'd <laughs> that's be, a really good wow. thing. So if you've got a. Uh, 2004 through 2007, ac- uh, 2004 through 2007, Saturn View with a V6, you're good. Just so you ma- keep it maintained. <laughs> but uh, it's fun. But anyways, um, yeah. So then Shannon and I drove from Cleveland back to Columbus. We kind of raced each other down 71. I bet. Did you? See, I, I put a video up on my. I think I did. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, I was like, they just bought matching cars. It's, yeah. I want to be like them. You guys are like the uh, what do they call it? The, the motivation for a couple. Like people want to be want to be that couple. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. That's, that's pretty good. <laughs> We're never gonna have the same car. My wife and I. <laughs> that's all right, man. Um. Oh, I lost my train of thought. Oh, you're talking about the mini bringing it home. It was sporty. I don't think I've seen it either. That's to, outside. Yeah, yeah. To take a look at it. Yeah, but it's it's fun. Everybody I put in there in the in the passenger seat, they're laughing. They're laughing their butts off, man. Yeah. Because they're fun. I mean, minis are fun. It's uh, I, I do have a story actually with that. So uh, Kyle, who was on here a few episodes back, he uh, you know, he's a big burly guy. He's into trucks. He's into V eight cars. And uh, I'll, I'll never forget. It was like twenty eleven. I think it was. He uh, I don't remember what he traded in, but. Uh, he ended up with like an 06, 07, whatever years they are, the uh, the Mini S, mm-hmm. little uh, factory supercharger. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and a six-speed, five-speed, six-speed. I think it was a six-speed. But it had, a, it had a blower pulley, a tune, I think it was, and uh, lowering springs. And I remember we all laughed at him. We were like, what, what are you doing, guy? Like, this is this is 
this is silly. Like yeah. we all just laughed. At, I remember posting on Facebook like, "Ha ah, ha ha, you idiot!" And the first time I rode in it, I was like, "I need to drive this." Yeah. It was one of the funnest things to this day. One of probably the top ten funnest things I've ever drove. It was like a go kart. It is. I mean, it was just a little rocket. Yeah. You know, it was great. I loved it. I loved it. It made me. I I remember the girl I was dating at the time. I was like, "You should definitely go get a Mini Cooper." I mean, it was that much fun. Yeah. yeah. And when you so the modes you've got like. Econo mode, mid mode, and sport mode. When you put it into each, it says something different, except for normal mode, which I'll talk about. But you put it into green mode, and it says on the screen, it says, let's minimalize. It's like, oh, that's kind of funny. <laughs> and then it's kind of corny, but it's, you know, it's pretty corny. Creative. Mm-hmm. And then you put it in normal mode, and it just says, let's motor. And then if you put it into sport mode, it says, let's motor hard. And there's a picture of the car on there. With a little go kart as its sole. Really? Yeah, I'll show it to you later. But oh, that's it's, pretty cool. Yeah, maybe I can take a picture and you guys can like post it up or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I'd like to see that. That'd but, be awesome. Uh, Let's motor hard. Yeah, I like that. But I'm telling you, it's like, you ever seen the movie uh, Venom, the Spider-Man movie? It's no. like this evil suit gets on Spider-Man. And he does these evil things, you know, not evil, but he just does things that he wouldn't normally do. That's how I am in this car sometimes versus my suv it's like i get into the mini and it's like you know you can like i call it tetris through traffic Mm. it's like you see you see a space and you just go and you can just go through traffic a little quicker or if you want to go around the corner fast no problem i mean it's just like it just it just doesn't come out of its lane Hmm. and the vehicle stability control is amazing in that thing i mean that's you're it's cheating but it works well to uh, keep you in your lane. So what kind of engine and trans is in this Mini? Two liter, um, dual clutch. Two liter four cylinder? Yeah. Okay. Two liter four cylinder turbo, uh, 230 horse, and um, uh, dual clutch transmission. Okay. And it's just, I drove the five speed before. I like the um, automatic better. It's just. Really? Yeah. Just because the shifts are just like. Pop, 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 and or the paddles. You know, you can shift down here, up here, and yeah. just it just you pop through the gears, and it's just wah, 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 like that hmm. versus and shift ah, like that. Yeah, which I do miss a stick a lot. I miss the tra- uh, manual transmissions, but yeah, yeah, that thing is just like. And if I'm busy, you know, not not busy, but you know, if um I'm eating something, let's say that. Yeah. If I'm eating something in the car, I just go from manual mode. I just hit it like that, put it over an automatic, and it's easier yeah but um yeah. i know what you mean i mean we've we've definitely talked about that you know the battle between automatics and sticks and i mean anymore automatics are just i mean they're faster they just are they're not always as fun but they're faster and especially you know if it's your daily i mean i i understand having an automatic as a daily i definitely get it. i've always had automatics as dailies almost almost always yeah but, uh yeah the dual clutches are super stupid expensive to fix though that's what I hear. Yeah. I, mean, I can't even afford one in the first place. So The way around that is to lease it, in my opinion. Like, uh-huh. That's what we did. We lease our cars. Oh, okay. And the ones okay. that I'm going to beat up a little bit just because, you know, they say. This is why I never buy a lease. I ask, like, is this a lease return, a dealer? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, I'm not interested because you don't know what's been done to it. I feel like the majority of the time it's probably going to be okay because yeah. most people probably take care of their lease. But if it's like a sporty car or like an off-road truck, eh, I'm going to stay away from it. Yeah. Yeah. I was having a conversation with one of my buddies, and, you know, he and I bounce things off each other. We've known each other since high school. Uh, I don't know if you know my buddy Chris. He lived up the street from us, but um, that's all right. He stopped by a few times. But anyways, um, neighborhood stuff, sorry. Anyways, <laughs> um, I asked him, I was like, should I buy this or should I lease it? And in my opinion, with European cars, they're nice when they're new. But you know, repairs are expensive. They break a lot. I've got I've got a laundry list of stuff. When I take it to the dealership for the first oil change, mm-hmm. I don't have I don't have four thousand miles on it yet. And when I take it in, I have a laundry list, not serious things, but things that are you know. Um, and there's after about five years, I've heard that minis sound like there's a box of forks in the back somewhere that you can never find because there's all these rattles that start to happen. Really, and I'm starting to hear them now. So shoot, yeah, yikes. But it's a lease. Somebody backed into my car yesterday. Really? Yeah, I was. Um, I met Shannon in Delaware for lunch. I parked out on 36 on the street, and um, this guy in this big uh, Chevy, like a full size Chevy, he's backing up, backing up. I'm like, he's gonna, he's gonna stop. He, I know, no, he's not. There it is. Damn. So, and we were walking toward the car, and um, he comes out and he's like, I was watching my camera the whole time, and Shannon. I, 
Shannon goes, did you see that you hit our car? Jesus. <laughs> and I was like. Everybody watched the cameras. Nobody actually watched the god dang mirrors anymore. I know. Ugh, it's ridiculous. I know. I've, and for all the things, all the technology that my car has and car new cars have now, I don't want it. Yeah. Here. Okay. So here's a good topic. Um, if you don't mind, if we transition here. It, um, so I remember under the uh, the Obama administration, I don't know if it got nixed or if it's still supposed to happen, but I think he had implemented a plan to, to mandate backup cameras yeah. in all cars by 2020. 2019. Was it 2019? 2019, I Okay. Did that get nixed? Because I don't think all cars have backup cameras don't yet. Don't know. I, I feel like it probably got nixed somewhere along the line. But I remember that him saying that, you know, he wants to implement that for traffic safety and whatnot. And I thought that was a horrible idea because what happens is, and I notice this with people when I ride with them, they don't watch their mirrors as much. People oh, yeah. get in and they watch the camera. They don't look around. And I feel like there's so much you can't see looking at that damn camera. I mean, my truck's got a camera. Yeah. How do I back up? That's yeah. how. I've had people just start laughing hysterically because the camera will come on. I put the RAM with the stupid knob shift, put it in reverse, camera comes on, back up. I do the same thing. Yeah. I'm in my mirrors the whole time. Yeah. And these people, you know, not everybody, but some of these people, you know, I can see them being like, oh, I scratched up my wheels because you can't see how far away you are from the curve. Because you're not watching. Yeah. Because yeah, it doesn't show you that. So if that ever were to happen where they implemented backup cameras in all new cars, I feel like it'd be a terrible idea terrible i mean i hate to think negatively about it but yeah. i just i don't think it'd be a good idea and especially with new teen drivers they if they never having known better without yeah. cameras all they would do is just backing up i don't know here's what i'll say about the, the camera though it um we're backing out of our garage and her and shannon's old my wife's old tsx and um it's like i had it in reverse and it was black the screen was black and i'm like oh it's broken so i'm backing up and i hear like, and I'm like, what is that noise? So I get out, and it's the neighbor's kid in his little tyke's car. It He's in the car, and we're pushing him across the driveway. The kid's in it? Yeah, he's oh, in Jesus. it. Oh, Jesus. He was just riding in the driveway. Christ. And I was like. I didn't think we were going to talk about manslaughter on here. No, no. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no, no. Now, we just, uh, you know, scooted his oh, vehicle across the driveway. And he looks up like nothing happened, and I'm, I'm like. What the hell was little Timmy doing back there? Dude, what there? are you doing, man? And he's like, hey. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So uh, I went and talked to his parents, and then we've got this rule now where um, every kid, and there's quite a few on, on my cul-de-sac, every kid is in charge of keeping – I put everybody in charge of keeping all the kids out of my driveway, basically. I'm like, hey, you want to be in charge of keeping people out of my driveway? Yeah. You want to be, everybody's in charge. And no one comes into my driveway anymore. They like, they know where to put their bikes if they want to come up and see me. Because I've, I've got like matchbox cars and mm. I've got a whole bunch of stuff in my garage that they can look at. And, yeah. But um, yeah, so we've got, we've got boundaries. Nice. Now. Nice. You got the kids working for you in the neighborhood. Yeah. I like it. So you have the inn when the lemonade stand's set up, you just walk up. <laughs> <laughs> Hook me up. Bless. Hook okay. me up. Nice. Yeah, I'm the guy that no, uh, I'll buy the whole thing for you know, just be like. You I've always wanted to do that. I've always wanted to walk up and just be like, let me let me get a glass of lemonade and just give them like a five. Mm -hmm. Always wanted to do that, but I feel like I don't see any lemonade stands anymore. Next it's, time it's they do, I'll business. let you know, man. Well, let me know. We'll go up there and we'll, yeah, I'll probably look a little shady, but we'll both drive up and just hand them money. That won't look bad at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Um. So the ramp in the minis. Here's a story. Oh, you ramped your new minis already. No. Jesus. The old, Stay away from mini leases, well, folks. <laughs> I think mine's been in the air a couple of times. Um, Jim and I Parkway, you know where Ikea is? Mm -hmm. There's that woo right there. And if I'm running late to the office, I'll hit it. <laughs> it's just be like, just, it, it's, uh, there's nobody out and around. No yet. wonder it sounds like a box of forks in the back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The muffler's gone. <laughs> nice. nice. No, but um, so in my wife's old mini, we were running late to a wedding and uh she's like we got to get there we got to you know whatever so um and she she doesn't drive like me but she drives spirited you know enough and um she's like giving me permission to get up there quicker i was like all right so we get out you know we kind of live on the boundaries of the city and the country and we um we go north we're instantly in the country so we're going down this road and then there's like this railroad um track that it was a railroad track that like we would see way over in the distance. So I'm looking at this train going towards the railroad crossing that we're going to have to hit in about three minutes. So she's like, we need to beat that train because this is a long train. It wasn't moving super fast. 
So we had a good a good ways to go, but if you match, so we so much to tell. The train was probably doing 45, and if you do more than that, of course, you know we we were passing the train, passing. We finally saw the engine. I'm like, okay, there's the engine. I think we're gonna be good. Oh, so you're running parallel to it? Yes. Oh, that's... at this point we're running parallel. Okay. Thank you. So we're kind of racing the train. It's going 45, and we're probably doing well. We're doing a lot more than that. So. Then the engine's way back there, and I'm like, okay, we're good, but I'm keeping up the pace a little bit. So I take a left, go down the, the street that you know where the railroad tracks are, and you know how the gates come down before the train gets to the mm-hmm. track. That happened. And I was still on the wrong side. So she goes like this. She sees the lights come on. She goes, go, go, go. And I'm like, she's giving me permission to do this. Wow. And I'm like, oh, man, here we go. So I threw it down a couple, and... I'm not going to say how fast we were going, but by the time we hit the hit the tracks, we were doing the speed limit on that road. And when we came down, because we so you beat the you beat the guardrails though. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. We they were like still up here, and uh, we were. Whew. So uh, when we came down on the other side, my ears are ringing. It was just it was loud. Jeez. It was um it was all safe. There's no no people around. Yeah, yeah, no, sounds like. No animals. NHTSA is going to be knocking on the door tomorrow here. <laughs> this this may or may not have happened. Yeah. Hey, if the wife's giving you permission, that means you got to, because then you just look like a bitch if you don't do it. I know, man. Yeah. Got to impress my girl, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I tell you a funny story with that, with the uh, the wife. So, take her out in the Camaro sometimes, and I feel like, so she she doesn't normally tell me to hot rod it. Normally, I just do it myself. Normally, I beat on it. But every now and then, she'll she'll like want me to beat on it. She'll be like, let's see what it'll do tonight or whatever. And I feel like she only does that like when something's wrong with it or like when I'm out for a test drive. Like I just did some work and I want to see how that, that work is going to do. It's like she subconsciously knows that I shouldn't beat on it. So she's like, I beat on it a little. I'm like, damn it. Okay, I hope this holds together. I tell you. It's like she knows. Just Just pretend it's always broken. Well, I mean, it kind of is always broke. It's always running, but I mean, it yeah. something's always broke, you know. Character. Odometer, speedometer, fuel gauge. It wouldn't be. Things you don't need. Yeah, what did we say that one time? You, uh, what did I say? You don't need an odometer to drive? Yeah. Yeah. It was a quote. <laughs> I mean, legally you do, but your odometer needs to work. Yeah. Yeah, legally. Yeah. And they've got all these apps that'll kind of tell you what's going on. Yeah, you know, I got one of those on my phone, but the problem is I never have my location on. So I'm, I'm buzzing down the freeway and I'm like, I wonder what, oh shoot. And I, I have a little, uh, I have like a little digital gauge that plugs into the OBD2 in mm-hmm. the Camaro and that reads the speed and everything. So I kind of go off that and it's set to the tire size and gearing, but, uh, yeah, the phone app's pretty good. I mean, it's, it's pretty accurate, but like I said, I just never have the, uh, never have the location on and I'm like, ah, I don't want to try fiddling with all this while I'm buzzing down the freeway. So yeah, yeah. So I normally run off that gauge, but uh, it's pretty accurate. So yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I got to I got to share this one story with you. Um, think of while I'm talking. Think of some cop stories you've got if you have any, um, any any traffic stops or anything that's happened. Um, the one I've, the one I'm going to talk about is I was coming home from work. I used to I used to have a uh, commercial cleaning business, so I worked at night, and then I would rush back up to Delaware before my wife would leave the house. Um, and so I was coming up Sawmill Parkway, and um, I'm just kind of, you know, left lane, going a little faster than everybody else. And um, this is back when I had the 91 Civic Si. We did that dual overhead cam swap into it, that ZC motor that gave me so many problems for like three years, and we finally got it right, then I sold it. (laughs) That's how it goes. Yeah. So uh, anyways, I'm going left lane, and I'm just buzzing by people, you know, a little quicker. and, And you know that you're screwed when the person that you're passing next, when you're doing... Like, everybody's doing 50 and a 45, you know, and I'm just going by them a little faster. There's a cop in the right-hand lane, and I'm going right by him. Oops. So, what do you do? You think, real quick, you think, do I slow down? Do I just act like, oops, sorry? No, I just waved at him and kept going. And so, my next train of thought was, all right, so there's a Circle K. There's like a little thrifty mart right there. I'm going to pull in there and get out like I have a problem. Because I know he would have pulled me over if I just would have stopped and been like, oops, sorry. Gee, officer, my accelerator was stuck. I don't know. But I got in. I, I actually passed him. 
and I kept going. So he was fading back a little bit and after I waved and got into the parking lot because I wanted him to know that I saw him. And guys, I, I love law enforcement. I love uh, first responders. Um, I've got a lot of friends and uh, some family members that are you know, cops and all the military, you know, and I, I appreciate you guys so much with all my heart. I really appreciate you guys. I appreciate you too, man, so much. Thank you for your service. Yeah, yeah, you couldn't have said it better. We'll we'll do a we'll do a claim there. Yeah, much as Rent said, is a very big uh, supporter of uh, law enforcement and military. Very yeah. big. But um, you know, I I didn't want to be disrespectful or anything like that. I just I was like, I, I waved and I was like, I, I know I screwed up, but now I got to come up with a way to not get a ticket. So I pull into the Circle K, and I stop. I sit there, and I'm looking at the the speedometer to see, you know, what, if he pulls up behind me, he pulled into the parking lot next to me, to the north. He stopped and he's watching me. And I'm like, all right, so here's, here's where the plan begins. Open the door. Get out. Like I got a problem. Stop. I walk in like this. I go to the bathroom. I grabbed an auto trader on my way to the bathroom. <laughs> And uh, I was in the bathroom for five minutes. <laughs> just hiding. <laughs> well, just... Oh, yeah. It's not he, a bad idea. Wait him out. Yeah, I don't Wait know what he out. was thinking. He's probably thinking, do I want to mess with that guy right now as far as, like, he's got a problem or, you know, whatever it might have been. Um, so I, I, he probably didn't want to wait five minutes for me to, you know, come back out and be like... So he was gone when I came out. And I just went home. I drove the speed limit the rest of the way home. Nice. That's probably good. It is. It is. Nice. So... Yeah, I feel like we've all, I mean, we've all gotten lucky sometimes. We've blown past cops just knowing, knowing we're going to get pulled over. And sometimes you don't. Sometimes they're just busy. Sometimes they're just, sometimes they're just like, oh, not right now. I don't mm-hmm. want to pull it over. I got a funny story with uh, cops and, and getting pulled over. So in, uh, in high school, this would have been junior year. Uh, I had the Ram that I was daily driving. But uh, at one point, I bought a, uh, an 84 K20 uh, Silverado. It was a single cab long bed on 33s, three inches of lift, four speed on the floor with a granny first and a 350. Just, just beastly. All rusty. It was white, but uh, it was fun. I mean, just a monster. You couldn't take it on the freeway because the gearing was uh, was too high. Like it, it would not go on the freeway. So I'm rolling up. Uh, oddly enough, Sawmill Parkway also. Um, and uh, I think the speed limits there like 40, 45, something like that. And I'm doing the speed limit. And all of a sudden, I don't know. And this is at night. Uh, we're going uh, north, and all all of a sudden. Cherries are on behind me. Shit. Okay. What I do? I pull over, and uh, county sheriff comes up, and he's like, "I don't remember what he said. Something like, like you know how fast you this the typical like you know how fast you're going, or or you know why I pulled you over. It might have been do you know why I pulled you over? And I said no, I I don't. He was like, well, you were speeding. And I was like, I, sir, I don't I don't think I was. You know, you hate to disagree with him because that usually pisses him off. But I was like, sir, I I don't I don't think I was. And he was like, well, you you were. I had to do about 70, 75 to catch up to you. I'll never forget that. He said something, it was either 70 or 75 he said he was doing to catch up to me. And I remember laughing and I went, well, kind of like, I let a smirk go. And I was like, sir, this truck won't do 70. Because <laughs> it wouldn't. Yeah. And the gearing was just, I, the, the rear gears were so high and the tires weren't tall enough. And that last, it was non-overdrive uh, trucks. So it just, it wouldn't. At about 55, it was running like 3,500 RPMs. I mean, it was, it was roaring. Jeez. So... I'm like, officer, I don't, I don't think so. And I'm like, you know, this, this truck won't do freeway speed. And he's like, God, grumbles a little bit and you know, kind of gives that look. And he'd probably already run my plates, you know, they're sitting back there for a while before he came up. And, uh, I remember him being like, okay, well, you know, he says the normal, like, okay, well, don't speed again. And then he goes, it is a nice truck, by the way. <laughs> he goes back to his nice. uh, car and leaves. And I was like, what? I look at my buddy. I'm like, what was that about? But it just cracked me up because I knew the one time I knew I wasn't speeding because I physically couldn't. Yeah. Yeah. It just couldn't do it. But it's hilarious. Yeah. But I feel like I've had a lot of interactions with cops as far as, you know, speeding or car stuff. I remember in high school one time we were off-roading in this, uh, this housing development. In Dublin, that's now, uh, you know, big, beautiful, like $600,000 homes, but it was just a, like a dirt field mm-hmm. back then, and we were off-roading, and uh, the cops came and uh, threatened us with trespassing, and mm-hmm. I was like 17, so I was shitting in my britches. I was like, oh, God, oh, God. But uh, 
nothing happened with that. They let us go. They told us to get the hell out of there. Because like I said, a lot of times, you know, the paperwork's just not worth it. Because as long as you're yeah. not, you know, it's not like we were back there doing drugs. We were just off road and we weren't damaging any equipment. We weren't tearing anything up because it wasn't muddy. It was dry. Sometimes they're just like, you know, just just get the hell out of here. Yeah. Just, just get out of here. And it's just easier for all parties involved at that point. But uh, but sometimes it's good, you know. Sometimes it keeps us on our uh, our levels. It keeps us in check, you know. Yeah. Because I feel like if you never get pulled over, you never uh, you never get brought down to reality, you know. Yep. I just recently learned the amount of paperwork that, um, uh, like a police officer, OHP, or whoever, you know, and sheriff. They, it's a lot. They um they. The the guy I talked to, he's a family member. He's uh, with Columbus Police. He said um it's like being a mobile secretary. Basically, it's like if anything happens, there's like a stack of paperwork and then forms that they have to do. And uh, I mean, it's necessary, you yeah. know, um, and there's more paperwork for certain things than others. But, you know, if it's something minor, there's a little bit. But if it's something where there's an investigation that needs to take place, then, yeah, he's got to like go in and log it in and stay there after hours sometimes and mm-hmm. make sure it's all done. Yeah. But uh, I'm telling you, man, they they put up with a lot of stuff. I mean, like. <sighs> Not just the paperwork. I mean, like, people in general. It's, every time I get pulled over, I'm so respectful, and I love law enforcement. You know, if I get pulled over, I know I'm getting pulled over, you know, and there's usually a reason for it, you know. Um, but you just got to be real nice to them because they're out there working their butts off. They, they're they the ones that would take a bullet for you. I mean, literally, if they if they had to. And I always think of that. You know, it's, um, I don't know. It's just... A lot of respect. I got pulled over in Powell when I was, had my commercial cleaning business. It's 2 a.m. And uh, I, I had this practice where I would stop. If I saw cop cars, at um, so I, I'd get off work, start start home towards Delaware, and I'd stop. If I saw cop cars anywhere, I'd stop just to let them know, you know, who I am, what I'm doing, kind of like, hey, I'd, yeah, I just cleaned the dealership down here, and I'm heading home. And so when they associate me with my car, and at that time, then, you know, they kind of leave me alone, which worked out pretty well, except for one time in Powell. Um, I was falling asleep going home, and, you know, a little swervy, swerve here. And uh, so it's like I see, like, lights me up. And I'm like, I'm awake now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I pull over, and uh, – Comes up to my window, introduces himself, um, and with uh, which de- police department he's with. He said, uh, I'm this officer with Powell Police uh, Department, and uh, you know why I pulled you over? And I've learned my answer should always be, I have no idea. So that's how I answered. And um, he told me that I was driving in a way that was indicative of someone who had had um, some alcoholic beverages. And I said, oh, okay, yeah, I was falling asleep before you pulled me over. He's like, he asked me if I had any alcohol. I said, no, I've had a lot of coffee tonight, and it's still not working. He's like, no problem with that, sir. So he went back. He, I was pulled over for maybe like six minutes, and uh, he let me go. So uh, he told me, have a good night. I thanked him, you know, for pulling me over. Um, I, I told him I appreciated so much that he pulled me over because if somebody else was out there really drunk, and I'm out there too, and I'm not, and I'm just trying to get home, you know, it's, he's he's looking out for people. So. Mm-hmm. He's doing his job. Yeah. So what I did was, next day I emailed the um, mayor of Powell. I was like, uh, I found his email, you know, and I was like, um, dear mayor of Powell. <laughs> I was like, this is what happened last night. This is the officer. Um, for whatever, uh, I, I labeled it. I started off subject line with true professional, because he really was, you know. I said, true professional, police, Powell, uh, Powell Police Department. Well, this coffee is hitting me already. It's like so many thoughts coming in and not coming out fast enough. But um, I just told the mayor through an email that this officer did a great job. And I appreciate that he pulled me over for, you know, what was happening. And so uh, that was on a Thursday at 2 a.m. One week later, I get pulled over again. <laughs> it's the same guy, same place, same time. Really? Yeah. It was up by, um, oh, shoot, what is it? It's just like Kinsale and all that stuff. And he pulls me over. He's like, asked me the same stuff. He's like indicative of somebody who was, I was like, yeah, I'm tired, man. <laughs> Remember me from last week? And he's like, I do. Uh, so he's like, I'll be right back. He comes back, comes back to me. He's like, all right, you're free to go. And, uh, sir, thank you for the email. The mayor came into my office and uh, gave me a pat on the back and wow. showed me the email. I was like, wow. hey, I told him. I was like, I got love for you guys, man. So. Building relationships in the community. I yeah. like it. I, I haven't seen him since 2000. 
that was probably 2009 when that happened, but it's been a while. I do remember his name. Nice. Yep. Nice. That's pretty cool. Well, I'm sure they appreciate that. You know, most uh, most communications that uh, they're getting in are usually bad or people complaining. So I think it's good to get to say something nice every now and then. Yeah. I can't. I couldn't imagine. You know, oh, I got to pull this guy over. He's probably going to go off on me. And if they do, then you go back to your car and it just destroys like your your whole moment. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of waste your day down. Yeah, I've definitely had cops be kind of jerks to me when they pull me over. You know, sometimes uh, sometimes it's different. Sometimes the experience uh, isn't always good. But, uh, yeah. hey, you know, I just always act the same. And uh, I, you know what's funny? I didn't get a ticket for years and years and years. And then uh, when I got out of the Army, I came home and uh, I had a new truck. And uh, it was a diesel. And, man, I got, I think it was three speeding tickets in like six months. Oh, wow, man. I feel like it was just bad luck. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, because I didn't. I don't think I had a speeding ticket prior to that, but just bam, bam, bam! All of a sudden, I was driving a little fast. You know, I'm home, new, I'm excited. Yeah. You know, but uh, when it rains, it pours, right? Yeah, yeah, it really did. But I've uh, been okay for a while now. Good. Yeah, tried to drive okay, but yeah, good stuff. Yeah. I'm trying to think of, uh, I had another story. I can't remember what it was. Let's see what else I've got on this. Uh, Thing right here uh we, oh yeah we might be pulling out a bush tomorrow with a uh 2008 viper srt 10 oh i need to come over and watch this yeah oh man wait tomorrow's uh tomorrow's a work day well tomorrow at 7 30 at night yeah boy hey, can i, can I bring can, beer if you can if we can use your truck to put the thing in oh no 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 that defies <laughs> the whole purpose that will get views. I, you know, people always put this dumb shit on YouTube. You know, these, yep. uh, this, uh, oh, country idiot does this, and it gets a million likes. Yep. That's what we need. Crazy rich guy with Viper pulls out tree stump. Results terrible. You know, you just yeah. always get, it's a uh, clickbait. You know, you just got to clickbait it. No, but uh, go on. I want to hear more about this. I'm sure. intrigued. You sold me. Yeah, so um, I'll roll it back. Um, so a guy that I've known since seventh grade, he um, he bought a Viper about, oh, was man, it's been a while six years ago and um first one i think was a 2010 and um i get a i get a picture text from my neighbor of a viper that's on fire in our neighborhood and my buddy lives up the street from me so he's like like all my neighbors are like they know i'm a car guy so if they see a car in the neighborhood they just instantly text me they're like hey do you know this guy well, there's a viper on fire do you know this guy i'm like I do know the guy because it had the uh, halo. He put the halo uh, headlights in it yeah. and stuff like that. I'm like, that's his. So I hop in my car. I run up there real quick. He's all distraught. I mean, his car is on fire. It's melting right in front of him. And I've got video. I've got pictures. I, d- I didn't give him the video or the pictures for like a year because I knew he was pretty torn up about it. Hmm. And um, oh, what he say happened, it was a faulty fuel line and the engine's hot. So, you know, you get flashpoint, boom. Yikes. Was it stock? Was it all stock? No. Okay. He had about 15,000 and mods to it. Hmm. And uh, there's insurance that will actually cover that. I've heard about that. Yep. Yeah. Insurance that will cover modifications. So he had that insurance. Yep. Well, that's good. Yep. So, uh, I mean, he had all this carbon fiber laid in. You know, it was beautiful. Yeah. Like, he, he spent so much time with that car and the stereo. What does carbon fiber look like when it's on fire? Just melty. <laughs> just melty. Yeah. 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 Just Yikes. real melty. Yikes. So I don't want to touch it. Thanks. But well, that uh, sucks. So you know, fast forward a little bit. He gets a um, a blue with a white stripe SRT10 with the five spokes. Um, he's got the supercharger on it and everything. What year? Uh, Two thousand eight. Okay. I believe is what he said. And I was over at ho- his house Sunday. Man, it sounds so good. He cranked it up, and it's just like, rawr, rawr. it just sounds so good, man. What kind of blowers on it? Do you know? I have no idea. All right. No we'll idea. Find out tomorrow when we pull out a bush. What yeah. else can we have him pull out with it? Oh, whatever, man. Well, can we weld a trailer hitch on it? Pull a pull a mini out of a parking spot. I don't know. <laughs> I see a whole YouTube channel now. The Viper Puller <laughs> or the Viper Pulls. I don't know. We'll work on this. We'll put a lift kit on it. Yeah, let's do it. Lift kit thirty threes. Do some. Uh, I mean, just go nuts. I'm down. I'm in. We'll get Chris. He can weld. Yep. I'm in. Nice. Well, that's pretty cool. Well, maybe we'll uh, maybe I'll have to try and partake in that. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Um, Brian, one thing I did want to talk about with you was uh, Hondas. Okay. You, you're a Honda guy. You kind of were into Hondas when, when I was growing up. Yeah. You guys uh, kind of pre, uh, 
Don't take this wrong. Pre Fast and Furious era, so it you was. can't even claim it was that. You guys were into Hondas before they were like as widespread as uh, as the Fast and Furious uh, yeah. franchise did it. Tell us, uh, tell us about your background in Hondas. All right. So, um, do you remember a green Civic EX coming over my house every Friday? I don't. That's okay, because I know you're popular. You were out on Friday nights, maybe at the football game or no, whatever. I was drunk. I did not. I I take that back. I did not do. How any. old were you? I was, I was like. 20, 20. Oh, yeah, no, I definitely wasn't. If you were 20, yeah. I definitely wasn't drinking yet. Yeah, but this uh, this this guy, he had a uh, 90, oh, I want to say it was a 95 Honda Civic EX. He started off just like lowering it a little bit, putting an intake on it, and it just sounded cool. You know, it was so different. Nobody had it. There were, what year would this have been? This was uh, 94, 95. Oh, gosh, that was, that was really pre- yeah. I mean, pre all that, pre tuner. Yep. He bought it new, put an intake, Akimoto. I can remember it was an Akimoto intake. And uh, then he lowered it. I don't remember. Uh, bro speed, exhaust. He did an exhaust, and it, it was the first one I ever saw with a big tip on it. Okay. It was a, he had like a four inch tip or three inch tip on that thing. And um, he ended up doing a bullfrog cam, which was for Honda. And uh, I think it was just for Honda. I might be wrong. But. Um, yeah, he had that thing, and he was running Mustangs like no problem. It tack really? out a, he uh, had something done to the ECU, so you could tack it out a nine in that car. It was just it was a screamer, It'd be like pre VTEC. It was VTEC, but it was like before the mean VTEC okay. rolled in, and it would just be like bah! like that, and just screaming down whatever street it was. And he hmm. was shaming Mustangs all the really? time. Yeah, it was hilarious. Huh. Then he put a Jackson Racing uh, blower on it, and uh, that thing was unstoppable. Man, it was yeah. just like. As far as I was concerned, it's the fastest thing I'd ever been in, uh, except for a couple Corvettes. Well, to that time. Yeah. Or is it still one of the fastest things? No, oh, for no, that time. I'm, okay. Thank oh, yeah. He thank prob- God. <laughs> no, yeah. He probably only had 200 horsepower at that time, but it felt good. You know, yeah, it's like yeah. you, you're not used to it. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Coming out of a four-cylinder. And that's when all the technology and four-cylinders started taking off was like mid-90s. You know, mm-hmm. it's like um, everybody started doing the tunes. And then um, fast forward to oh, 2000. 2001 i think i found a 2000 type r used at acura columbus and um i bought it with 9,000 miles and uh, you remember that right yellow one right yeah yeah um i left it completely stock was it a real r oh yeah okay oh yeah those are pretty highly collectible now right oh i wish you know you got the list of and this is this is a topic for another show but list of cars that i wish i would have kept that's the one that's because the one. In the condition it was in before I sold it, with low miles, it's worth $45,000 now. Chew. And that's because the people who bought them, they didn't have garages to put them in, usually, and they get stolen. I mean, it, sitting out in the mm. parking lot or something like that, they're gone. I mean, everybody wanted that B18C5 uh, dual overhead cam to drop into their Civics or, you know, mm. whatever. I mean, that was a that was a cool car. Yeah. I don't think I'd – I couldn't drive it today, man. It's just – it would have been a garage queen – um, I don't know. And then Fast and Furious came out. Okay. So, I don't know. I pulled, I bought that car. I pulled it off the lot. And here's what happened. I'm just happy to have the car. I'm getting to know it a little bit, you know, play with the radio some. And so, I'm in it. I'm sitting on 161, heading towards, like, um, Sawmill Road. Straight out of the Acura dealership. Sitting there, dun, dun, dun. this green four-door Civic pulls up next to me. It's like a 95 or 98, like 98-ish <clears throat> DX. Four people in the car. He's in the left lane. I'm in the right lane. I hear this. I was like, oh, man. <laughs> I knew this was going to happen. I knew I could take him. He's heavy. He's underpowered. All that good stuff. I got to wait for VTEC to kick in, but still, I'm sitting there. So I rev it up, and I'm like going, boom, boom, like that. Let the VTEC kind of, and he looks over. He's like ready to go. You see the yellow light coming over here, getting ready for the green over here for us. And I'm going, whoa, he's going, like that. It turns green. He goes, a little chirp out of the tires. He's like, I take a right. He nice. Just goes. I'm like, later, turd. I was just like, I didn't want to do that, man. Yeah. I feel like that happened in some movie. Wasn't that in some movie? Oh, it was like, uh, what, what movie was it? Oh, well, maybe Back to the Future. 
Was it? Remember they try to race each other. One guy goes in reverse, the other guy takes off, and he almost crashes. Yeah. But that's pretty cool. Yeah. I yeah. like that. I didn't. I just got the car, man. Yeah. I yeah. had no idea what it was going to do. But see, most people wouldn't have been that disciplined. Most people would have just been like, hell yeah, I'm going to beat the shit out of this thing. I just got it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I like that. That's good. It wasn't my intent with that car. My intent was to uh, not trash it, not race it, not do anything. Went to Carlisle, uh, Carlisle uh, Car Show for imports one year with my brother. We drove out there. We took it. We we drove nice, you know. Um, some Maximus trying to mess with us pretty hard. And uh, we ran a little bit, maybe for like 30 seconds. And then um, he just like, he was way more powerful than me. He had a 3.5. I'm only like 200 horse, you know, and no torque. And he's like, he just takes off. He's like, gone. He must have been doing like, because I don't know what we were doing. Like if it was 65, we were doing a little bit more than that. But he was doing like, way more than that and so he was like just going hmm. so three minutes later he's pulled over oh no side of the road and uh i didn't honk or anything like that i was just like man that sucks yeah yeah i got a funny story like that uh the i was telling you i got pulled over a lot when i got out of the army uh one of them we uh we were heading up north to marion county to the drag strip and i was in the cummins and i had uh i think it was three people loaded in there we were all going and uh at this point, I had had, what, I had a tuner, exhaust, and an intake on it. So, I mean, it, it made some it made some power for what it was, you know, for being a 7,200-pound truck. But uh, we were going up, uh, what was it, uh, 161, 33, whatever, yeah. We're going up there and uh, freeway. We're going freeway speed. And uh, a Porsche, I'm going to get them mixed up. I don't know my Porsches. Is it a Cayman or a C- Carrera? What, what's the SUV? Cayman? Um, Cayenne. Yes. Cayenne, yeah. yeah. One of those is coming up. And they were kind of new at that point. And I was like, I'm going to run them. You know, it seems silly, but I was like, I'm going to run them. And I didn't have the uh, I didn't have the programmer on. I feel like it's a rookie excuse. But um, so we're going, and uh, and we're both kind of cooking. Now he he's kind of pulling on me. I mean, he you know it was a faster vehicle, but he's not like flying past me. I mean, he's just kind of slowly passing me. Right. And I'm giving it everything I got. Black smoke, you know. But uh, I was like, yeah. And he's some golfer looking dude, looks pissed. He's passing me and he's so he's going faster than I am and he looks pissed at me. He's like, Ugh. Well, we both get pulled over like ten minutes later. Well, at the same ten, time? Ten, not ten minutes, sorry. A, a few you know, a few seconds later, we both get pulled over. Yeah, at the same time. Damn. The cop gets in front of me, pulls him over, because he was in front of me by then, and uh, I won't lie, he was in front of me. Cop pulls us both over. The cop lets him go, comes back and gives me a ticket. What? Yeah, it's pretty ridiculous. I should have had a better argument to sell for and he that. knew somebody i don't know i i don't know because he actually went up to them first talked to them and then i see them pull away and i'm like ah oh, this isn't good he must or he's gonna him. both let us let us both go i don't know if the guy was like i don't know that guy was was terrorizing us i don't know if the right. cop came back and yeah. gave us a ticket yeah that kind of sucked that does man yeah but you know we were racing he didn't give us a uh you know he didn't give us a reckless op or anything so that's good just just speeding i mean we were cooking but it sucked we were on the way to the drag strip and got busted for racing yeah <laughs> we still went and pulled five or six runs that night and that's true cool. yeah yeah that was fun do you think the cop went up to the porsche and been like all right sir who won uh, maybe he'd be like i did sir well i'll give the loser a ticket and he did but i had to be proud that he wasn't just blowing by me yeah he was just kind of creeping by that's me. cool yeah but that how was... many people were in the car uh him and his wife i mean your car uh myself and three other people yeah so you were loaded up even and it was i mean that, that truck uh with just me and it was 7200 pounds yeah so and that was with the tuner i, I think it was off at stage one so i had a uh i had a program at an edge that uh, had five stages i don't remember what each one of them was called but uh it was on like stage one which was like it gave you like 20 horsepower over stock and uh it wasn't enough i needed more for him but uh yeah that truck was a beast i mean it wasn't the fastest thing in the world but i think if i had, had turned up i think i could have given him a run for his money yeah yeah should have kept that thing. That thing was a monster. That's the one. But uh, Hondas. So yep. I wanted to ask you what, because uh, you had, how many how many Hondas have you had? Uh, I haven't had that many. Really? Um, yeah. So my first car was uh, like my mom's winter car. It was a Mazda 626, a 1982. That was kind of a until you get your own car car. And it sat out in front for quite a while. And it was that maroon burgundy two-door thing. Um, no special stories about it at all. Um, I burnt a clutch out of it just because I thought it was fun to give it gas as I'm going, pop the clutch and do that a lot. So, uh, yeah, nothing special about that car. It got me where I wanted to go when I was 16, and that's cool. Second car was an Isuzu iMark, which is a Chevy Spectrum. I don't know if you remember those. Is that like a Geo? 
Yeah, pretty much. Okay. But um, Isuzu actually made a like a variant of that car that was a 16 valve Lotus tuned suspension type, and uh, it was a hatchback. I wanted it so bad, but I had my car, and you know it was good for what it was good for, and that was stereo systems and uh, get my first pair of set of wheels. And which were um, chrome 15 inch. 15 inch was huge back in that day because it was stock on 13s. So, uh, and then come to the Hondas, I found it when I worked at the dealership. I, um, somebody traded in a 1988 two door Accord. Accord. LXI, I got oh. it. Are we still up? Well, we're still on video. Yeah, it can't keep us down. Can't keep us down. Do we have audio? We don't have audio. No, it, 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 we have audio it paused. There. So, uh, we could switch cards and like keep going. Otherwise, we have like less, or maybe 55 minutes left. Can you uh, just hit record again on the audio and can we pick back up? I, I can start the whole story over. We'll just pick back up. We'll transition back in. Yeah, okay. keep the camera. Yeah, just keep the camera flowing and we can cut it. That's the first. I, I did clap, so you'll know where it is. Yeah, that's true. And it goes black, too. What the hell happened? Somebody hit a pole. Maybe. That's weird. What is this storm? Mm -hmm. Anyway, okay. Hold on. Audio, do we have audio? We've been cut off. We think so far. It's fun. Yeah. I'm coming, I'm coming back. How long do you think we're doing? Hard 10. I think it'd be pretty close. Hmm. Okay. We'll say half an hour. Yeah. You good? Okay, um, power outage. That's the first. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, usually the damn camera just dies. This time the whole damn house went down. Somebody's got a car story out there somewhere. Yeah, let, let's take it on the road. Let's go. Somebody just crashed. Somebody might have hit a pole. <laughs> yeah, did your Viper buddy, uh, no, sorry. Oh, no, he doesn't hit poles, man. Oh, that's good. That's good. He's well, good. maybe he tried pulling something out and it was an electrical in it. <laughs> right. Pulling this, poles. This guy, I haven't even met this guy, and he's going to be like, fuck that guy. No, no. He's cool, man. He's super cool. He's a good driver, too, so, yeah. Um, I don't know how good you have to be to pull bushes out with a Viper, but it's going to get some views. We're going to find out. Goes. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, he, he called me up or, uh, sent me a text. He said, uh, he's going to be pulling a bush out of his front yard. Do I want to come over? Oh, I thought it was your front yard. No. Oh, okay. No. So you're going to show up with six people and he's going to be like, what's going Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I was just, I was just like, Hey man, what if we, uh, so my first thought was, well, let's let's get something from Hertz, something like a Skyline or not a Skyline, but like a GTR. Rent a GTR for some views, and uh, you know we'll do that. Yeah. Or there's this like little Chevy Aveo type thing, and it's green alien looking thing. And that'd be more fun. That would be. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, get some get some fun autocross videos on that in a parking lot or something. I don't know. I feel like a damn thing will roll over. Got to make sure you get the insurance though. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, he's like, I'll just do it with the Viper, and I was like, All right. I like it. Well, so I got to ride with you. I can't show up in the truck. Why not? Well, because then, if it's, you know, A equals B. Man. Yeah. My goal was to get you over there. I'm just kidding. I'm coming. I'm just going to ride with you. That's cool. In the Mini. Um, but you were talking about Hondas. So how, how many did you say you've had? You, you said you didn't have that many, but. So um, maybe like four or five. Okay. The first one I ever had was an 88 Accord LXI that I got from the dealership that I worked uh, at. Uh, Two-door LXI. Was this Burgundy. the same 88 Accord that you were ramping? No. I uh, never. No, 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 no. No, man. I wouldn't buy that car. <laughs> Some It's, it's going to go to the junkyard, basically. You know, just done. These cars were never going to anywhere. Maybe a buy here, pay here or something like that, but those cars get repoed. Oh, gosh. I repoed a car once, too. Yeah. <laughs> for this dealership. Yeah. Wow. That's a different story. Um, I'll, tell, I'll tell it real quick. They are, they're like, hey, man, can you go get this car? They had a buy here, pay here um, portion of their dealership, and some people weren't paying. So uh, they're like, here's the key, here's the address, and uh, go get it. Okay, cool. So we go down to this apartment complex with the address. I've got the key. A little bit of a rush, though, because you're taking somebody's car, and it's got stuff in it, you know? They're like, make sure it doesn't have any people, any, any kids, any pets. I'm like, of course. It's probably so, good, yeah. Yeah, I just uh, this other guy pulled up uh, i got out of the passenger seat and uh out the passenger door walked down the sidewalk to the car and uh had the key as soon as i get up to the car i mean i'm looking around for people there's nobody around i'm not doing this though i'm not being like 
You know, yeah. I'm, I'm just kind of like sunglasses on, looking around, drop something, look back type of thing, get up, walk, get up to the car, put the thing in the keyhole, turn the thing, get in the car, go out. And uh, we're that's it. Nothing super rushy about it. It was my first time and only time ever repoing a car. I can say I did that. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Nice. You didn't get shot. That's good. Yeah, I couldn't. I, no one chased me down, so... Yeah, nice. That was that was kind of neat. Well, that's pretty cool. But as far as Hondas, okay, Accord, then um, uh, 88 LXI that I've said like 15 times now, and the uh, 98 Civic EX that I leased, I actually lowered that, put 17s on it, way before anybody was doing anything to anything. Um, and there were like two of us in Columbus that maybe maybe three, I don't know, but you knew who the people were that were doing stuff to their Hondas, and you would wave at each other. You'd see them on Bethel Road or something like that. Like in our part of town anyway. Yeah. But like um, campus, you go down to campus on the weekends, you'd see like three or four Hondas that were done up, you know. Um, everybody had the undercarriage glow. The mini trucks were big back then too. Oh, yeah, they were. Yeah, yeah the buddy, little Nissan hard bodies and whatnot. Yep. My buddy with the green Civic had a Nissan hard body yeah. right before that with some nice NK wheels on it. Um, we got hung up on a curb one time because he forgot the curb was over here and I didn't pay attention. And he takes a right out of the parking lot and he goes, so we had to push it off and also teetered on it yeah yeah it really was we had to get the back wheels to hit just enough to pull it was like ah, just Damn. the craziest noise ever but um yeah so then after that 98 civic um i turned that lease back in lowered they didn't notice or care um type r came after that i think no 91 Civic SI came after that. I bought that for 3200 bucks from MKey. Um, I bought that when I had that 98 Civic, actually, because I wanted to keep the miles off the lease. So I was driving back and forth from Dublin to Delaware all the time. And, uh, yeah, I got that thing. And then I was a little more power hungry for, you know, it wasn't enough. So I, I put a dual overhead cam ZC from Japan in there, new ECU, um, HF transmission, which is the tall gear. First gear did five zero fifty miles an hour. That's the perfect turbo setup. I'd never put a turbo on it, hmm. but I'm going. I'm just like ringing out the gears. It would go up to about eight thousand RPM with the new ECU that was in there from the ZC, and uh, second gear would get up to eighty miles an hour. Yeah, second gear was eighty. First was fifty. I don't know what third did, but uh, yeah, I mean, pretty good gear. Yeah, that, Boy. nothing low end. But, I mean, I guess it's a Honda, so there's not yep. much low end anyway. So nope. Yeah. Because I don't think it'll come at any surprise. You know, I'm, I'm not a big Honda guy, but uh, but I can appreciate anything. I mean, and that's and it's cool that you were doing it before it was, I mean, it wasn't big yet. You yeah, know, late 90s, mid 90s, it, it wasn't really a thing. Because I remember they were cool next door. I mean, you know, I was young. I thought anything was cool. But they were cool because they weren't, I, I hadn't seen them much. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I still, I love going over to your house because you, uh, you know, a lot of us, say older guys but people that remember four by sixes i love all your collection of four by six photos oh. that takes me back that my oh man <laughs> just four by sixes you know the lighting's all shitty i love old four by six photos and you got all your cars there a big big wall of uh photos of them i do I love yeah. that yeah love that not at the house when we we're neighbors but at my house now i've got yeah i've got like a poster of all my old car photos yeah, yeah and that's cool i got a lot of four by sixes somewhere i need to dig them all out I do, but yours were nicely done. You know, you uh, you park the cars in grass, get good photos of them. All mine were just kind of on the fly, like, oh, hey, whatever it takes, man. Yeah. Whatever you can get. Not a lot of people even take pictures of their cars. I know. So, no, not anymore, because nobody gives a damn about cars as far as like young kids anymore. And that might be a generalization, yeah. but you know, it seems like it seems like kids don't care about cars as much anymore. And I've talked about this a little bit in the past, but I don't know. Maybe it's just what I hear about on social media. Yeah. Who knows. Yeah, there's um, Cars and Coffee. Have you ever been to that down at uh, the Lennox? No, I. Uh, it's funny when I worked at the uh, the hospital down there. Worked security for a couple of years at the med center, and uh, I remember I worked Saturday uh, first shift, and I'd go down there, and all the cars were there, and I'd try to get the uh, the roving patrol that day so I could drive through with the uh, security vehicle and see the cars. But uh, no, I've never uh, never actually gone down there and walked around. So, yeah, yeah, it's a lot of a lot of wealthy guys. There's um, yeah, there's a lot of wealthy guys. Some there, and most of them are out of Byers. Uh, what is that? Byers Buyer, Imports out east on Saturday mornings. 
Okay. A bunch of Porsches, Ferraris, Lambos, stuff like that. Um, I don't think my Mini would be welcome. I know the view would um, be looked at as a trash can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there. There yeah. they might. Yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, the one at Linux, the spirit's still alive with these kids, you know. Um, there's a lot of, like, I've noticed a lot of 20-somethings down there, um, a lot of BMW, Volkswagen, some Honda, but it's more the Euro, Euro turn. Probably a lot of Subarus. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Euro turn. Why can't I say Euro tuners? Euro tuners. <laughs> Euro tuners. But, yeah, it's um, it's still alive. Get, we'll get together and do that sometime. Yeah, let's go. You guys can come with us. We'll take it on the road. Yeah. We'll do... Uh, Podcast on the road. We could. I'd yeah. be down. Do yeah. it live. Yeah. Facebook style. Um, one thing I did want to ask you, back to the Hondas, though. I know some some people that really know me are like, Kyle's really on the Hondas tonight. But uh, I wanted to ask you about new Hondas. So you you grew up with them. You had them. You liked them. You modified them. You drove them. What do you think of the newer Hondas? Yeah, so and we're talking like, I, I don't even mean for modifying. Like, what do you think of just stock new honda like where honda is now versus where honda was say 20 30 years ago so when we were in cleveland there was a used accord like a, a new one sitting on the lot not not but you know like low mile used new body style accord is what i'm so what year are we talking was that like a 18 i think that's the year that they first came out yeah that's so I would never buy a first year anything of any make, and that's what it was. Uh, if it was two years old, I might have might have bought it, and not leased it, but bought it. Um, it just comes down to you know age range. I'm gonna be <laughs> you're gonna laugh. I'm gonna be 50 in five years. Okay, I wouldn't have guessed. So it's like I'm 45 now, and for what I do every day, I could never roll up in a Type R. I could never. And I say that, and I've got this Mini Cooper. It looks like a go-kart. I mean, it's, I don't know. Stuff like this car, the Mini Cooper, it's fun for getting from A to B to C to D because it's my time machine, man. Mm-hmm. It's, I made it to my dad's house. You know the um, the navigation, it gives you a time. It's like, take that, you an hour and 10 minutes. It's a time to beat. I beat it by four minutes. That's pretty good. <laughs> I didn't even know that was a thing. My wife looked at it and she's like, "And then you're talking a short time. You beat it by four minutes, like a like how, like a twenty minute drive or oh, it's 30? an hour and a half. Uh, hour. hour what was it an hour and ten minutes? Okay, you yeah. beat it by four. That's pretty good. Four minutes. And she told me that, and I was like, okay. She's like, no, I can't even beat it by a minute ever. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, cool. It's time to beat. And as soon as I see that time, I'm gonna beat that. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but it's it's fun for that. But like, I don't know. Even pulling up, like, if I'm showing a house or something like that, it's a conversation piece. So I guess I could roll into that aspect of it. Um, I'm not just pulling up and let's talk about realtors' cars, you know. Whenever Tuesdays we have tour and we go, we've got, like, if a new listing comes on, we'll go house to house to house and look at the houses, give our opinions about, you know, what's going on and whatever. And the cars that are outside, they're Range Rovers, Mercedes, um, some Honda, new Honda Accords, some older Honda Accords. But it's usually like European type stuff or yeah. whatever. You can tell where if you're lost, just follow the Mercedes, you know. And that's pretty much And here I am. I'm rolling up in a Mini Cooper JCW, you know. It's like when I downshift, it, it's like mm, pop, 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 like that. Well, maybe I'd go for that realtor because he has a good time. We do have a good time. Yeah, that's what I mean. We do have a good Versus time. Versus like a 2019 Mercedes, I don't know, S-Class. I don't know what the classes are now. It's, yeah, I'd, I'd go for the guy for the Mini. I'd be like, sell me a house. You seem like a fun guy. Well, <sighs> realtors, we all have our personalities, you know, and everyone's a good fit for somebody. Um, yeah, I don't even know where to go with that, man. Like, um, we're all, uh, we have a lot of good realtors in town, and... uh we do have fun. I mean, we do. We have a great time. And I don't know. I just, it all starts with, I listen to people, you know. It's like I pull up as a conversation piece with the car. They want to know about the car. I take them for a ride. I let them drive it, you know, whatever. And then um, we do our thing. We do our business. And, is I mean, this is how I show a house. I, I've got my checkered shoes on, you know, um, jeans, polo. And I don't dress in suits every day because if I'm going out to a construction site, yeah, I got a construction background too. So it's like, I know if I walk in 
to a, a new build or something under construction and all the guys are like doing work in there they're looking at me like you know they're they're saying things you know yeah but i walk in like i'm part of the part of the job or something like that then i feel a little more comfortable my clients feel a little more comfortable and my clients don't wear suits either you know yeah like when we go look at houses they're wearing osu stuff and you know it's just i went to a a, a listing appointment yesterday and um I just wore this jeans, you know, polo shirt, and uh, she had on pretty much like PJs. If I walk in in a suit, she's gonna feel like, oh, I should have done my makeup or yeah. all that stuff. So I just, I just try to meet people where they are and where they're comfortable, you know. So, yeah. I mean, that's the goal, right? Try and relate to your customer. Yeah. You know, trying to assimilate and relate to them the best, and I think that makes people feel comfortable. You know, I mean, I'm sure there's some people who prefer a realtor in a suit, but I, I feel like the majority of people probably want somebody they can relate to yeah. somebody they can be like okay i trust this guy because he doesn't look like a square like he's trying to sell me stock options and when i talk when we go into the house i talk about it like i tell people it's like okay i'm gonna go into this house like it's me buying the house i'm gonna tell you exactly what i'm looking at like what i would look at if i'm buying the house and when i write the deals i always start off with how i would do it and then i go over it with them like okay this is what brian would do how would you like to change it how would you like to roll it back? Because I was going to ask you related it to them because I feel like that'd be the key, like selling it to them, making them think like me here, trying to put them mentally living there. Yeah, like they, I turn them loose, you know? I turn them loose. When we get in the house, first place I go is the basement because I want to see what's holding, the, what's holding the house up. Is it good? You know, if the foundation's crap, um, it's going to need, you know, reinforcement, some I-beams or something maybe. If it's good... We tell them, I tell them, and we move on up. Not to get into house stories, but because the car stories are fun. We'll get back to that. But, like, I went to this house in Worthington one time, and I'm walking in. It's beautiful. It's built in 1890-something, plaster walls. You know, everything's been updated, beautiful hardwood floors, all this whatever, like modern kitchen, like a badass kitchen, you know. And I go to the basement. It's a mess. I was Structurally? Afraid. Yeah, man. Ooh. So I get into the basement, and it's like the original foundation was brick. So after 100 years, it had crumbled into yeah. dust. Like part a large portion of that foundation crumbled into dust. What they'd done was they took like center blocks, you know, concrete blocks, and they stacked them up about that high, and then they put posts. They jacked the house up, yeah. and then they, you know, pretty much restructured it. Okay, that's fine. But then there's termite damage. Like, so you've got like somewhere in here, you've got you know, so, so lateral supports that go across to support the, the floor and all that. Some are I, uh, steel I beams and others are wood. Well, these were not like manufactured wood. These were trees, basically. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, because that's what they did back yeah. then. Build it off the land, and there was so much termite damage in these things. Like, I mean, it, it just looked like a golf ball that had been drilled out like a thousand times, you know, and I'm telling, I'm showing them this. And the thing that really took it home was the gas line that whoever ran the gas line for the kitchen, the updated kitchen, they just bored out all the way through the brick, like in the middle, there's like a middle foundation. Okay. They just bored it out with like a still like a drill. Mm -hmm. And then they ran the gas line through that without any conduit over it. So, if it were to shift or move or something yeah, like it would cr 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 that line. Yeah, I feel like that's a big, uh, it, what's the word, violation, code yeah. violation. Yeah, so that's just one of my cr crazy house stories. Like, um, not that it's crazy, it's just dangerous, man. No, that's pretty bad. And that's like pretty a, crazy because how much was the house listing for? 400000 Yeah, that's a no-go. <laughs> so he's like, but we really like it. I was like, all right, so... We should make an offer. Well, you can like it from a safe zone 100 feet away from the house. Jesus. Well, what I told him was, if you like it that much, it's going to need, oh my gosh, man, at least $250,000 worth of work if something, like, if something shifts in the foundation, all those walls are plaster. Oh, yeah. Man. And, you know, it's like if anything moves Crack. in the house, the whole house would be like, Yep. So, I was like, make an offer 150 to 200. He didn't, but, you know, it was just way too much of a project. I'm sure it probably sold at its price that people were listing at. Uh, it went off the market. It actually didn't sell. Hmm. 
Um, I haven't seen it come back on either because I want to get back in there and do a video so bad. I'd like to see it. Yeah. Boy, but I tell you, to bring it back full circle with cars, I feel yep. like it's the exact same thing. Like like true car guys, I feel like if you're looking at an old car at least, like classic car, I feel like one of the first places I go personally, like I looked at a car recently, for one of the first places I went after I did, I did a couple walk arounds of the car. I'm like, hey, you know, I'm talking to the guy, I'm walking around. And then before I looked at the engine, before I looked at the interior, I went straight underneath. Yep. Started looking underneath. I went and looked at a uh, 99 Firebird the other day. Yeah. It was a WS6 clone. Okay. I'm trying to get back into a uh, an LS 4th uh, gen. And uh, it was just a little rough around the edges for me. I made him an offer that was kind of kind of lower than what he wanted, but higher than what I even wanted to pay. But uh, he didn't go for it. So so no 4th gens now. But we're, we're working on another one. But anyway, yeah, I, I feel like that's one of the first things you look at. Like guys always say, uh, you know, does it have good bones? Mm-hmm. You know, you got to look at the structure. Got to see how that is. And some people don't care. Some people just look at the... Uh, you know, the outside, they just want everything else to be good. Maybe some people can do uh, um, structural repairs, you know, frame repairs, chassis repairs. Um, but I feel like for me personally and a lot of a lot of classic guys, that's that's one of the first things you should look at. And that's that's good that you're taking people down to look at the bones first, yeah. look at the structure. Because everything else could be good, everything else could be shit, but the most important part is down there, is, is what's holding it all together, you know. Yep. Yeah. So can I share a little trick that I came up with? Maybe, maybe it's something you do. Um, but if I go to look at a car for, I help my friends out too, if they want to sell their car, well, you know, but, um, if they want to sell their cars, they want to buy a car. I just say, call me up and we'll go look at it. And, you know, if they don't know anything about cars, you know, I'm looking at like, does the hood line up? Does this, are the stickers, the VIN stickers good here, that, whatever. So I start underneath as well. And if I can't get underneath the car, I take a big, long selfie stick, keep your old cell phones. And here's why. You take your old cell phone, you clip it into the selfie stick, and you hit record, okay? And then you turn the light on, or put a light with it, and then you slowly move it under the car. Scroll it underneath the car, and just keep going. And then pull it up, like, wherever it stops, just pull it out, go to the other side, do it again, and then watch the recording. Sound like you worked at a uh, checkpoint for a uh, yeah. base in the Middle East. Yeah. A little, I mean, uh, little mirrors on the rollers. Essentially, that's what it is. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. But you're looking at stuff, and if you can, uh, you can get these wide-angle clip-on things that on Amazon. Just go like that, and you've got like 180 degrees versus a little tiny box, which you can see the whole under underside of a car like that. Yeah. No, that's a good tip. I, I've never gone that far. Um, you know, I usually start uh, start feeling around there. I'll try to bring a flashlight if it's an older car, but uh, that's a good tip. I've never never quite gone that far. I like that. I like that. I definitely, uh, as far as like engine goes, I definitely pull all the dipsticks, all the fluid caps, whatnot, and smell everything. Yeah. Try and see if something's burned, if something looks discolored. Like, I'll get in there. I'll damn near taste the ATF. I do taste it. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, you know, there's worse things. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Yeah. No, there's lots of little tips and tricks, definitely, for looking at cars. Yeah. 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 Good things to know. But, uh, yeah. Um, one thing I did want to bring up, I had a gripe. You did. That I feel like I should discuss with you. Go for it. And kind of why I brought up the Hondas. I know some, some of our dedicated people are probably like, back to the Hondas. Sorry. Um, so the newer Hondas. Sub story for that's this. That's right. Gee. So, no. Yeah, it's going I should have warned you, man. I go off on tangents. Hey, that's what this show is. This show could be, should be called Much as Tangents. Why not? Yeah, well, because the whole show is that. <laughs> um, so my uh, my Ram that I'm always bitching about, it's uh, it's got blown manifold gaskets. So when it's in four-cylinder mode and you're next to a uh, like a barrier, it's just all you hear is just tick, 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 tick. tick okay. You just hear all the valves and rockers and everything going. Sounds like an 87 Tercel. Bad. Or a Hyundai. Yeah, something bad. So I keep meaning to take it in because it's still under warranty and I'll let them deal with the shit, you know. But every time a new Honda pulls up nowadays, the compression is so high on these motors. Yes. And this this genuinely happens. So like in the summertime, I, I'm a windows down guy. I Unless the wife's in there, I try to keep the AC off, all the windows down. I love it. You know, I'll be sweating and I still love it. Just, just wind in my face. But I'll have the windows down. I'll be stopped at the light. And uh, all of a sudden I just start hearing... Tick, 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 tick it. I'm like, oh, shit, the truck. Oh, God. And I look over, and there's a brand new Honda CRV or brand new Honda Civic next to me. And it's because the things are running like 15 to 1 compression. Yep. Do you know how, um, you know, the pressure of the fuel getting shot in is? Oh, are they direct injections? Yeah. What is it like? Uh, well, yeah. Um, I, I only know like a little bit about Chevy direct injections. I'm just starting to learn about direct injection. Um, 30,000? It's uh, 10,000? 20. 
Twenty thousand. Yeah, you're close. Okay, twenty thousand psi. Yeah, direct injection. We'll have to. That will come back. We'll have a topic on direct injection. That's that's a new thing. I'm still learning about. That's 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 the reason I would never buy a Honda. I would I'd lease it because of the fuel injection. Yeah, man. Because think about all the pressure gets shot in there. Mm-hmm. You know, the, all the wear and tear. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, traditionally, what was it like? Twenty or forty pounds. Uh, fuel injection. Yeah, usually like between fifty and seventy. Okay. Yeah. So a lot less. Yeah. But now it's just like. Like the Hyundai GCI or GDI is what they call it. Something, I don't know what they call it, good direct injection. <laughs> good. <laughs> but, or great. But, you know, that's like 20,000 pounds of fuel going in there versus what it used to be. And all those seals, you know, they get a workout. Yeah. Yeah. That can't, the light, I don't know. That, the sustainability on that can't be very good. Reliability. Well, I, I hope that. they're building them for them. But this, and I, I don't want to start a 20 minute tangent with this, but I, I just feel like I would argue, and. I shouldn't make this claim with, we need to wrap this thing up. I shouldn't make this claim here, but uh, I, I feel like newer Hondas are just junk compared to what they were 30 years ago. Yeah. In I terms can, of durability, reliability. I get on board you know, with that. Longevity, yeah. yeah. Their transmission's always been junk, though. Yeah. Always. Dang. But, uh, yeah, it just blows me away. Like, I'll just be sitting at a light, and all of a sudden, I'll just start to hear the ticking increase, and I think the motor's about to seize up in the Dodge. I look, I, I've done it every time. I look down at the tack, and I'm like, oh, everything's fine. Look over brand new honda next to me and it's just because that compression saw it's 15 15 16 to 1 compression so and they're still running 87 but that's i guess they're meant for that now i feel like that kind of compression i, I feel like you're supposed to run high test gas but uh i don't know maybe you I'm should just, maybe i'm just getting old maybe i'm just not uh not on board with everything that's uh we like out. what we like you yeah know? technology i tell you it's getting crazy but uh i tell you speaking of that um you talked about uh some of your favorite cars cars you'd owned um one thing I like to do with everybody, uh, I like to ask your uh, your dream cars, the oh, reality, shoot. and sky's the limit. Okay. What is your reality-based dream car? Something you could buy tomorrow or a year from now? Hit me. DeLorean with an LS1. Ooh. Ooh. You want to know why? Why? You pull up anywhere. You pull up anywhere. You're going to make friends. Yeah? I don't do it to just impress people. When I had that Type R... I made so many friends with that car. It was un- unreal. And I still have those friends to this day. I just went last month to a birthday party with all these mechanics from Acura because I asked who works on these on the side. Yeah. And, like, I met three people instantly. Really? Yeah. But, um, yeah, just that's that's why I got back into cars. I went nine years without um, just with my SUV. And then I got the Mini. And I'm starting to get back into that car culture again, you know. But, yeah, DeLorean with an LS1 because it's a DeLorean. It's different. LS1, that's off the beaten path with that car as well. Um, I know the purist would be like all over that, but yeah. I don't care. I'm not in it to do that. So uh, There's a couple out there. There's a couple LS1 DeLoreans. Yeah. yeah. See them pop up on YouTube every now and then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some guys have done it. That'd be cool. Yeah. That'd be cool. Would you do the whole Back to the Future theme or just keep it stock? Stock. stock? Yeah. Okay. I changed, I might change the wheels. Go, go a little bigger so I can get smaller profile. I don't know if I've ever seen a DeLorean on wheels. I know. They're probably out there. We'll find they one. It might be. Yeah. I like it. What about you? Dream car reality? Yeah. Uh, I've talked about this. Um, I think uh, I, I've owned I've owned a couple of them. You know, I got the, I got the 69 Camaro. That was always kind of on in mind growing up. But uh, one that I'm, I'm trying to make happen, but I'd need to get rid of the truck, would be a uh, 94 Viper RT10. Hmm. Red with three-spoke wheels. That's kind of my dream car reality. That's the uh, no hard top? No hard top, Roadster. Um, they started making them in 92. So I would do like a 92, 93, 94. Um, really anything pre-GTS era. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, Roadster, those three spokes, slasher wheels, I call them. I don't know what they're actually called. But, uh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. It has to be red. I, I had that bedroom wall poster yeah. growing up. You know, that's that's mine. And uh, one other one that I did I did own recently that was a dream car for years and years and years is a black on black WS6. Oh, yeah. And I had that one, sold it, but... Uh, so I can cross that off the list because that was that was a dream car for years. Got that, but really that Viper, and I can make it happen. They're uh they're going up right now in value, like everything is. But uh, you can still find a really really nice example for around thirty. But I'd need to I'd need to get rid of the daily for that price. I'm not quite ready to do that. So so that that being said, would you, if given the opportunity, if it was maybe ten thousand less, would you get the Hulk Hogan version of that car? The yellow and red. Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah, where it was red, but all the accents were yellow. Yeah. No, I don't think I... I'd consider it. I mean, if the... if the, Ten grand less, But boy. you couldn't paint anything. You had to drive around looking like Ronald McDonald drove it. 
Uh, it's like the McDonald's colors. Held it. Ten grand, twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, why not? Yeah, why not? Because it came like that. Yeah. Because it's actually, it's it's not like Hulk Hogan fucked it up. Right. It was like that. Yeah, I would. I would. It's not what I prefer, but I would do it. You don't have to have the Hulkamania sticker on it. Hulkamania. Why, why not? What if I want that in the back window? Is there a back window? I don't know. If the, no. I think I you know. had it like plastered down the side a little bit and on the windshield. Yeah. Why not? Why not? But uh, what about your uh, dream car? Sky's the limit. Anything. No holds bars. Like a uh, anything. You know what? Could be anything. I don't know, man. Anything short of like an airplane. <laughs> Could be a boat. Let's change it up. Could be a boat. Yeah. Yamaha. Uh, like a 20, 30 footer Yamaha. Oh, I was just kidding. You actually had a dream boat in mind? I do. Okay. Yeah. Well, hit us. I, it's not a boat show, but why not? I'll try. I mean, and... I like the Yamaha jet boats a lot. My wife and I go up to Alum Creek. We we um, watch people put, you know, dude, you want to talk about stories. You go up, you guys go up to Alum Creek Lake, go up to any dock where people are putting their boats in on the weekend. If you live in Ohio, if you live outside of Ohio, sorry. Yeah. But like best free entertainment you can have bar none, like... You can't take, you're not supposed to take drinks or anything like that, but you could take like a picnic basket and, you know, Gatorade and put whatever you want in there. But just to watch people put their boats in, like just this past Sunday, some lady was back in her. Oh, you're talking about launching stories. Yeah, launch stories. (laughs) People launching their boats, man. It's the best. I've helped so many people back their stuff down into the. Yeah, because people can't back up a trailer. No. Yeah. Yikes. Uh, No, you ever seen any, nobody's, you've never seen anybody lose it, have you? Like lose the vehicle? No, not lose the vehicle. Um, one guy backed his, it was a um, a bigger, older boat. He backed it down. It filled up with water. He didn't, something was wrong. Uh, the plug probably wasn't in, but it flooded way too fast. Something else was wrong. So when he's pulling it out, he had to pull it out real slow. All this water. It was crazy how much water was coming out of it, dude. It was like way up here because he backed it down and it went, bloop. It just went kind of like sinkity sink. Bad. And um, there was another time. This is my favorite boat story. So um, we're just standing there watching. We get on time. Yeah, right. you're, good. you're good. So we're standing there watching um, people put their boats in, and um, this guy can't get his boat started because the battery's dead. So he pulls his Grand Am. Remember those? Mm-hmm. He pulls his Grand Am over to the side of the lake, and there's, like, concrete right there, and then oh, the no. ramp's right next to it. So the ramp goes down like this, and there's, just like, this, I don't know, wall. And he's up here. So he's, like, jumping the boat with the car. And so... They got it hooked up on the boat. They hooked it up on the car. Like, it starts up. You know, the boat's going. Yeah. So, lady just takes it off, throws the jumper cables back. Jumper cables fall into the water. Still hooked up to the Grand Am. Nothing happened. But I was just like, ooh, you know. Jeez. And So, that's not even the the best part. The best part is, you know, they finally get everything put back together. The guy takes off on the boat, comes around to pick him up in a little bit, you know, whatever. The guy gets in the Grand Am, and he's like... I don't know what he was thinking, but he just takes a left. He didn't see that drop off right there. His car goes like that. So the front end is kind of stuck down on, and he's like hung up. A truck had to pull him off, you know, like somebody did, took their trailer off, came back, hooked him up, pulled him off. He drove away and it just, it didn't sound good. Boy. That was the best one that ever happened, man. But there's like been dozens. Yeah. Well, now I want to go down there with a lawn chair and a case of beer and just watch. Yep. Sounds like a good time. I'll call you. I like it. Let's go. Mm-hmm. Right after the uh, the tree stump of the viper. <laughs> yeah. It's right down the street, too. <laughs> nice. All nice. of it. Nice. Um, well, I tell you, one uh, one thing that we did, haven't done uh, done in a couple episodes is the, uh, the Jags' weirdest part of the week. Ready for this? Jags. So, a couple, uh, oh, God, somebody's trying to buy some. Yikes. So I found this a few years ago while I was searching for some exhaust parts. I found a Medusa looking Woo. box of Benz. I'm gonna show this to the camera. Is that cool? Well we're gonna we're gonna post the picture up there so they can see it. So yeah. Yeah, it looks like a snake pit. So they just sell a box of miscellaneous bins. But here's the funny thing in the description, it just says miscellaneous bins and the size. Cause I think you can get them in a few different sizes. So you don't know what you're getting. I'm tempted to go buy the damn thing just yeah. to see what I get, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't need that many pipes and uh, 90s and U's, but uh, I might. I just think that's crazy. They, uh, they sell that. Mm-hmm. Cracks me up. It's like a grab bag, right? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. I huh? mean, I don't know if there's any organization to it or if they just said, well, we got this beast to make this, throw it in the box, sell yeah. it. Yeah. I don't know. I might go buy it. 
Yeah. I think you should, man. Check it out. I'd watch yeah. that video. Well, that and uh, I still want to buy their motivational book that I shared that one time a couple of episodes back. Yeah, or their motivational series. Maybe I should just do, maybe every episode we should just show the book of the week that they sell. Do you remember that? They uh, they sell motivational books. Nice. Yeah, like Becoming a Better You and Commanding the Room. Like nothing car related. Yeah, but they're all marked down to like two ninety nine because somebody was like, why do we have this? Yeah, hmm. but that's that's Jag's weirdest part of the week for this time. So It's kind of like, it's kind of like a extra box got thrown in. That wasn't supposed to be there. Like, what do we do with this stuff? Yeah, somebody shipped the wrong case, and it apparently had enough uh, units that they uh, could list it and sell it. So, Jigs. Jigs. They don't keep anything up there in Delaware other than yellow hats anymore. So maybe it's just motivational books and yellow hats and yeah. miscellaneous bins. Could be. Yeah. Yeah, that'd, that'd be a good video, man. Like the uh, unboxing of, you know how people do phones, computers. Yeah, and, the unboxing videos. That would be actually, that'd be real interesting because, you know, they don't unbox, unbox the computer. There's a computer. There's a, What's in the Jags box? What's in the box? What's in the box? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Mine would be boring because I would just be like, oh, fuck these guys, I'm just going to open the box and see what I, and here it is. It's the item I ordered. Yeah, but everybody can leave a comment. What do you do with this? Yeah, what do you do? <laughs> Yeah, we'll see. I might. I might. But, uh, yeah, Brian, that's about all I got for this time. You got anything you want to tell the audience? Any last uh, comments, words? This has been fun. All right. It's been fun. I like this. Cool. I cool. like your show, man. Thanks. Well, yeah. I appreciate you being here. Um, like I said, guys, check us out on uh, at Much's Wrench Set on Instagram there. Um, Brian, thanks for being here. I do have one more thing. Okay. All right. And what you got? I just thought of this. So I have a YouTube channel that I'm starting, if I may plug Take it. Take it away. All right. It's called Better Homes and Garages. Oh. I'm the uh, I'm the garage friendly realtor. So uh, like my buddy with the Viper, we were looking for a while. He was starting to settle on these garages that I I just knew it wasn't gonna work for him. It's like let's take a break, man. First one we came back to, it was he was looking for three car. We found three cars, but the one we came back to when we first got into it, it was three car with an extra car to the side, like half car. Okay. So, and then it was like an extra half deep. So I'm a garage friendly realtor. <laughs> you are. You've sent me homes that are $300,000 out of my price range, but the garage it makes me want to go into debt. And it just, it, I don't know, man. It just, I can't stand it. I see all these pictures of houses on MLS None of them have pictures of garages. Yeah, they do. At all. Except, yep. You need to tell them. You need to tell MLS, Zillow, all these companies, Realtor, H-E-R. You need to tell them. Take a picture of the goddamn garage. It's important. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. I'm sure most of the husbands would agree. That's a, uh, It's not the first thing I look for, but it, yeah, it's, it's really important. Well, after I see the front house, okay, the front of the house looks good. Where is it? Okay, garage. Mm -hmm. So priority three. Yep. Yeah. Nice. That's it. Um, better homes and garages on YouTube. I have one video up right now. So, uh, well, there you go. Better homes, and garages. Check it out. So, all right, Brian. Thanks for being here, guys. We'll see you next time on Much as Wrench Said. Have a good one. See you.